Hey, Where everybody. Welcome to Web Sleuths YouTube Live. My name is Trisha Griffith, and you recognize the incredible woman right next to me. Actually, it's just a split screen, everybody. It's Aphrodite Jones, the uh, true crime author and uh, award-winning uh, and, you know, number one selling author. I mean, you have so many great titles, Aphrodite Jones, and you can go to her website, aphroditejones.com. Check out all her books. And uh, how are you doing, first of all? I'm good, Trisha. How are you tonight? I am doing great. I really appreciate you coming here tonight with us because we're going to talk about um, a documentary that uh, has been on HBO Max, and it's been getting a lot of uh, oh, feedback, I guess, I guess, if you will. And that is The Staircase. You know, Aphrodite, you and I have been talking about this case for how many years? I've forgotten. I, and it's gone on now since uh, the trial was in 2003. Yeah. He got, uh, uh, 2011, he got a, a stay and got out of court on a technicality, out of prison rather. Um, 2017, he took an Alfred plea. And here we are now in 2022 with the release of a brand new series starring Colin Firth playing none other than the killer, Michael Peterson. Right, exactly. And that's on HBO Max. I called it a documentary, but... Uh... Well, it's, it's not. It's, it's a dramatic yeah. series. There is yeah. a documentary, remember, right. that's on Netflix that yeah. shows the character himself in the living person, you know. Yeah, that's the, I was thinking of that for some reason, but the HBO Max one is with Colin Firth. And I love Colin Firth. I he's do, great. too. I do. He's fantastic. Well, and probably the reason you're thinking that is they're both called The Staircase. Yes, that's so you why. Have, that's, yeah. that, that's why. Um, Colin Firth is, is a brilliant actor. And actually, I just got back from London where the this this series is the biggest thing since sliced bread. Colin oh, Firth is there, you know, Robert De Niro. Colin mm -hmm. Firth is there, everything. They love him there. And uh, it's on billboards, it's on buses, it's on it. I mean, this is huge. Every time you turn the TV on any of my hotel rooms, you know, they, they call it the true crime series to end them all. <laughs> okay, and that's literally what it's bannered as. Um, and he's brilliant. You yeah. know, Colin Firth had 13 hours of documentary, uh, the next Netflix documentary, which was purchased by the film producer, to study his character. Yeah. So there's 13 hours of the real Michael Peterson that Colin Firth was able to study. And boy, did he capture that man 100%. He, he should get an Academy Award for it because it is absolutely amazing. It is. But so let's talk about this. We're talking about, okay, there's two things, The Staircase, the documentary, and The Staircase, the HBO Max series, which has come out, and and it's getting a lot of conversation. And Aphrodite, they did, I believe they followed your book, but they left out the best parts, which was the great evidence that you have in your book that shows Michael Peterson is just guilty people it's not that complicated he's guilty but anyway let's talk about this okay when did you first hear that hbo max was was doing this series so i heard, I heard about a year ago i think when it was first um cast and i thought to myself oh my god i hope they're doing something the right way there was a movie based on my book called the staircase murders and treat williams played the role right that came out oh my god in 2007 or 8 mm -hmm. but here's the thing Colin Firth has the ability to transcend the lie that the filmmaker is per perpetrating in this thing. Or at least that's how I looked at it by the end of the show or the end of the series. Um, in his smirk at the very end, that's just ever so slight. And in one or two glances, through, as you're watching this series, it's an eight part series, you get the sense at the most impactful moments that he has gotten the best of everyone as a Michael Peterson. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is that, there is that, but the evidence that's missing from the documentary and the series based on that documentary mm -hmm. is as follows. They concentrate on the staircase, the stairwell, which is filled with blood. They concentrate on the blood expert who did some, quote, unorthodox testing of the of the, what happened to Kathleen Peterson and and later was found to be um, less than ethical 
in his uh, testimony, not in this trial, but in a previous trial. And because of that, all his, his, everything he did was discredited. All the testimony was thrown out. That's why Michael Peterson got a new trial, even though he'd lost every appeal. Um, but here's the thing. The blood expert was testifying about the blood in the stairwell. Mm -hmm. The blood in the stairwell, they focus on so heavily in the documentary as well as in the staircase of the series, when in fact, there's other blood. There's blood inside the shorts, the crotch area of the shorts of Michael Peterson. What about and that? They don't the bring that up. The only way you're going to get that spatter is if he's standing over her beating her. There's blood on dripping, drippings of blood on his athletic shoes. The only way that's going to get there is from something dripping on his shoes. He tried, you know, he, he held the body and he mixed himself around in the blood. He definitely repositioned the scene, but he was unable to figure out how to take blood droplets off the mm -hmm. top of the sneakers, right? Right. Um, and then, too, there's a drop of blood by the crystal cha uh, uh, champagne glasses on this, on this kitchen counter, mm -hmm. which, okay, those there was a drop of blood underneath there. He claimed they were drinking toasting champagne and she was drunk and that's how she fell down the stairs. When in fact she wasn't drunk, she was 0.07, they had been drinking and one of those champagne glasses was broken. Nobody brought that up. And there were no fingerprints of hers on the other two champagne glasses that had been set out on. So there was a whole setup scene. And I'll tell you this, Trisha, there was luminol used by the detectives who called it a crime scene from the moment they walked through the door and the right. lead homicide detective who testified that that luminol showed rabbit tracks of Michael Peters Peterson's footprints going back and forth from the stairwell to the mudroom back and forth and back and forth cleaning up what he could of the crime scene, what he needed to clean up. So, I mean, and evidence that there was some washing of the shorts that was, that, that was attempted as well. So, and by the way, there's the footprint of Michael Peterson's athletic shoe on the back of Kathleen's sweatpants that she was wearing that night. So he stepped on her while he was in the midst of all this. And all of that came in and none of that came into in the court and none of it came in to either the documentary staircase or the series staircase. That's, unbelievable. That's, uh, that is unbelievable. It's shocking. It's appalling. And uh, it just shows, especially the documentary, uh, yeah. on Netflix. If that the documentary is supposed to be like an unbiased look of the facts and obviously not at all. But um so let's talk a little bit more about the staircase on HBO Max. Well here's okay, let me just say this. Okay. Uh at one point in episode five, there is a revelation. And the revelation is important. It is that Kathleen Peterson had a crushed thyroid cartilage, which is evidence of strangulation. So right. that element, which is crucial to all the rest mm -hmm. of the evidence, was brought in to the HBO series. Well, that's something. I mean, that's you know, big. that's huge. That is big huge. That they did that. Thank goodness they Thank did. Thank goodness. And here's the thing: the now when this happens, the filmmaker, the documentarian. Mm -hmm. man, John Xavier de la Strade, he had sold all of his rights as well as his right to be portrayed in that series. And he was portrayed by an actor, as was his team. And you I couldn't get in, in the HBO Max series. Yes, yes. Documentarians were also featured in there doing the documentary. Exactly. Okay. It, was a, it was a documentary within a, within a series of the next gotcha. year. Okay. And I wondered though, why, how interesting could that really be? Why would you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. Until you start to realize you're getting this glimpse of this woman with silver hair and you see her here and there and wherever and flashes. And there's a lot of flash forwards and flashbacks. It's brilliantly done, brilliantly done by the uh, filmmaker. Um, and then you realize he's been having an affair with her. Peterson with the editor of the film of the documentary for 12 years. She admits to it. And now while she's claiming there was no bias in her editing, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, so now De La Strade, furious goes to Vanity Fair and, and the post a, a piece he's interviewed saying that he wants uh, disclaimers put on this uh, series, that he wants to prevent the rest of the series from airing, which of course didn't happen. Right. He had sold it lock, stock and barrel 
to Antonio Campos, who's the film's director and producer. Mm -hmm. And so there was a twist, a huge Whoa. twist. Okay, so let me make sure we got this. Okay, we have the documentary team. They do the documentary on Netflix. The documentary team is portrayed in the HBO Max series about the staircase. And Julia Binoche, the played Oscar herself. winner, played no. the editor, the played female the editor. editor who was in love with Michael Peterson. Okay, but they don't show the affair in, obviously, in the HBO Max thing. They and show enough. Hand that you get the hint. Plans to go to Paris and live mm -hmm. together. They show enough. Little kisses. Thing. Uh, yeah. No. And then, and so, then they, that she specifically asked about it, and she she admits that yes, wow. she's a, she's a, she has had an affair with him. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So she becomes uh, a big character in yeah. the last part of the series. Right. So uh, so who went to to um, the magazine and complained? It was the director. Yeah, well, of, it was the director of the document the documentary of the because documentary. it compromised the legitimate legitimacy. Absolutely, of it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. How can she say that she did not? Um, I, I, it didn't. It didn't. You know, shade effect. her view of right. the editing. Yeah, effect. I mean, come on. You're in love with the guy. How inappropriate is that? And for 12 years, Trisha, 12 years. Think of that. So here's the thing, too, is that weirdly, there's this owl theory that people out there in, oh the, in the metaverse and the universe yeah. want to believe in. I'm wearing an owl right here. I don't know yes. if y'all can see it. It's really cute. Thank you. And I'm, it's my little, you know, it's a little talisman to remind mm -hmm. myself of never to be around owls. <laughs> They're so dangerous. This one comes down toward me and kills me because, you know, <laughs> they're everywhere. They're they German owls. They fly to the United States and to Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how these owls are, you know, mul multiples. Uh, anyway. Killer so, owls. Excuse me? I said they're killer owls. Killer, killer owls. Killer, owls. Thank yeah. you. So now... The interesting part of it is that the female editor, played by Julia Pinoche, is the one who takes on the owl theory. She interviews the guy who initially came up with this. He's a character in the whole he's show. A, yes, he is. He's a character in himself, that's for sure. I, totally. And he came up to me in my book signing that I did at Duke years ago when my book came out in 2004 and put a talon on my writer's desk where I was signing books. I see, All of it, I'm looking down signing books and I see this talon. So what the Yikes. I look at what, what is this weird, you know, thing, three yeah. legged, just that. And so he had been pushing this and she, she interviewed him. And ultimately it was the female editor who pushed the owl theory to the max. Oh my God. And in the, in the HBO max series, so bad. One thing they do that's interesting. They give you three separate scenarios of what may have happened. They relive it. Mm -hmm. One is her falling and falling a second time down the stairs as per what was uh, the defense claimed in court. Okay. Right. Okay. The second is Michael Peterson leaning over her and hitting her with an object. Right. Which, which is, is what the prosecution alleged, which is exactly what happened. Right. Okay. And the third later on is she gets attacked by an owl and runs into the house and slips and falls down the stairs and all the blood from their head that was on the owl gets all over the staircase. So that's gotta be the stupidest they thing. It. That's so oh. stupid. It, it can't be. And <laughs> explain and tell, we talked a little bit about before the uh, live stream, uh, tell us how the owl theory would fit in where the blood was found other places. Well, well that's okay. So that's just it. And if the owl, first of all, let me say this. If an owl was attacking Kathleen, I've been on that property. I've been inside the house. I was there when it was sold and all the items were sold and the auction happened um, after he lost and had to sell it. It's not that big of a property. The house is big, but, and it's a big, good sized property. I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. but if you're on the side or the front of the house and you're being attacked that violently, you're screaming your head off. And if you're, he was allegedly sitting outside at the pool, he'd hear her. <laughs> Excuse oh, me. So, you. thank you. He did hit her. He did. It's so obvious. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm saying he would hear her. Oh, hear her. Oh, I thought you said he'd hit her. Yeah, he would hear her. I mean, that would be huge. 
She'd be, She'd screaming, be screaming out of her mind. Right. You mean he wouldn't have heard that? And the documentary tries to cover that up by having a fountain flowing out in the backyard in the pool. The problem is, first of all, I don't know if they had a fountain. I don't think they did. Right. But secondly, uh, it was no, it was December in North Carolina is cold. You're not flowing a fountain in the pool. Your no. pool's not even open. Right. Okay. Oh my God. But they used that as a way to show he didn't hear her because the mm -hmm. fountain just left. So, I mean, look, here's the way they put this theory out. An owl attacked her and that owl attacked. She then was in such pain and, and wobbling around. She ran in the stairs and up, ran in the house and went upstairs to get towels from the linen closet. Because that's the first thing you would do, Trisha, right? Is if, if I you were attacked, attacked, right? I'd run up the big staircase and grab towels. Because that's what I'd be thinking of, <laughs> is the mess. Oh, my God. <laughs> Aphrodite, this is crazy. These are grown people, and they think that they can get away with this. And they have, and, I guess. And, well, and the, the weird part is, I mean, here's Colin Firth, one of the greatest actors ever, participating in this, knowing what the script is going to do, right? Right. Um, and Tony Collette plays Kathleen Peterson. She's brilliant as well. I, I mean, her. it's an all-star cast. Mm -hmm. So you got to wonder what, how did they really feel about this owl thing? Especially since there are so many people out there who want to believe it. Now there's one element I was interviewed by the New York post uh, film critic before the series aired. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I understand that there were hair, there was hair found in Kathleen Peterson's hands and within it was a fe a feather. Yes, it was a feather that was microscopic, Trisha. Microscopic. Do you know how many feathers are in our pillows that are microscopic that wind up in our hair that we don't realize that's when you brush it out? I had no idea there was such a thing as a microscopic feather. That's crazy. Well, I mean, think about it. It's like a tiny piece tiny, of a piece tiny. of a piece well, of yeah. feather. And right. then beyond that, it still has to be looked through at through a microscope. So it was a piece of a piece. It was a little teeny tiny microscopic piece of a feather. Right, it was, it was right. so but it wasn't so, this owl feather stuck between her fingers like they're no. trying to make it sound. <laughs> right. Hey, wait, not only that, here's the good part. The owls in that area that they do have, it's it's a nice area, it's the nicest part of Durham, and it's got a lot of trees, are about the size of a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a pack of owls, maybe a big pack. It, it, oh, it, 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 honestly, I don't understand why people want to believe this. Why? Yeah. Wasn't there blood, Kathleen's blood, found in Michael Peterson's crotch of his pants or something? Yeah. So how yeah. would that happen if an owl attacked? Did the <laughs> owl go and, like, spit on his crotch or what? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's just stupid. Come on, people. Well, but here's the thing. They don't show that evidence in the documentary. No. And they don't yeah. show. And, and, but interestingly enough, too, the documentarian knew. He had. 1300 hours of footage okay mm -hmm. and he, he condensed it to 13 hours that you see on netflix mm -hmm. he knew that that owl theory was absolutely ludicrous and did not put it in the 13 hours that you see on netflix right. but because there's such a howling from <laughs> the outside world about the owl right right he had to do an addendum and put it on the internet as an add-on to the documentary, The Staircase, to discuss the owl and the owl that theory. is so stupid. We have a cr uh, question from um, One Man's Trash says, but what happened to the owl? <laughs> well, what happened to the owl is the owl went to prison and was sentenced <laughs> to life without parole. And then because go. of a technicality, the owl got out. Right. And so what? where does it stand now with, with Michael? So he, well, what happened, and this is also portrayed um, in both in both staircases. Mm -hmm. um, there were two staircases, right? There's right. the staircase that Kathleen Peterson fell down in 2001. And then there's the staircase that his girlfriend fell down in Germany in 1985, mm -hmm. where she was found dead at the bottom of the stairs, and he's the one to find her. Right. So now he gets out on a technicality. Dwayne Deaver, the blood expert, had fortified his resume and they were able to show also that he had falsely testified or w w questionably testified in a prior murder case. And mm -hmm. when that was disclosed, that case was overturned and opened the door for Peterson's lawyer 
to ask for a mistrial, which happened, the judge still wasn't going to let that go. Peterson right. wore an ankle bracelet for almost three years. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, what he decided to do was to, to have what they call an Alfred plea. Okay. Are you yeah. familiar with? Very familiar, yes. Okay. It's yeah. They it's basically he says um, I, I didn't do it, but I'm pleading guilty. You have enough evidence to show that I did, but I didn't, and I'm pleading guilty. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know when you're when I was in London just now and trying to explain that because I did an interview with the BBC. They have a wonderful podcast that tells the real story. It's mm -hmm. called The Staircase Beyond Reasonable Doubt with a question mark, and <laughs> they truly, uh, you know, give you the real story. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was there talking about this out, <laughs> they just, they, you know, they really, uh, it, it was beyond their comprehension, but also in, in explaining the Alfred plea in another country, they're thinking, what, how crazy is America? America is exactly. allowing somebody to say, I'm not guilty, but I, uh, but I'm admitting that if I had been going to trial, I, I could be found guilty, but right. I'm not guilty. I mean, uh, it's it's nuts. Yeah, the alpha plea plea is nuts. Yeah. And it, you know, and so it's so it's a manslaughter plea, mm -hmm. and it only has a sentence of two years and plus. So he'd already served eight years before all this happened. Right. So he was out from the moment he, but he's still convicted of manslaughter. He's yeah. a killer. He's a killer. It's I don't care, killer. Alfred. No, Alfred. Mm -hmm. He he had agreed to be convicted of manslaughter, and. Is he still having the affair with the editor? Do we know? Oh, oh no, no, no. And in the film, it shows you how all that shaped oh. out. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, he's he's a shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. And he does the same thing to her that he did to the other women in his life. And he's a shapeshifter. No. So, uh, you know, and that's done very well. And that element of the, of the, docu of the docuseries, the, the dramatic series, is brilliant. Um, and all in all, the series is brilliant. All in all, Colin Firth is brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I just find it very disheartening that they would they would actually entertain this owl for an entire episode, and even more than that, um, it's it's just ludicrous and it's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah, it just. But people really want stupid. it. Why? I have a question to you. Yes. Why do people want to hold on to an owl? You know what? I mean, I've I got it on know. my chest here. I'm wearing the owl now. I've got my tail. <laughs> Why? Why? Because they want to, they don't, they don't want to go with the, the common thought. They don't want to be with the main crowd. They want to look at something differently and they want to be the ones to say, you know, yes, this makes more sense because he's such a charming guy. There's no way he could have killed it. And I get the owl. I understand it. They just want to be contrary, you know, contrarians. I, guess, I think that's also, it. I suppose it's such an odd theory, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think everybody loves an owl, you know? Well, they do. They're sweet little babies. I, I mean, love there's owls. something about an owl that's just so attractive, especially mm -hmm. because they're only out at night. And we don't yes. get to see them. So they they're hoot. these mysterious creatures. And, and yet, by the way, there is no evidence that an owl ever kills a human being. If you no. look it up on Google, guess who comes up? Michael Peterson. Kathleen Peterson. Yeah, Kathleen Peterson. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, that's it. It's the only one. And there will be people that will go to their deathbed believing that the owl killed Kathleen Peterson no matter what you show them. And that's been the hardest part for me in general in true crime is just accepting the fact that people will not accept evidence in some cases for some reason and you just got to move on but it's really hard especially with someone like you who's done so much work on this case and then to see hbo give a, a whole episode to this ridiculousness of it that just must be unbelievably frustrating i was i was like mortified when i i, I couldn't believe in the beginning there was a moment where one of the characters looks up toward their woods, okay? Mm -hmm. And you hear a slight possibility of an owl in the soundtrack, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I know there's going to be an owl in the background here somewhere, but little did I know that they would dramatize the whole thing. That's so, it, it just, it makes, to me, it makes the filmmakers look silly. Uh, it, yeah. If it weren't for Colin Firth, who is mm -hmm. so freaking brilliant. Yeah, he is. I would have been out of my mind. But Colin Firth saves the day. <laughs> he does. I love him. Because through it all, he has those 
key moments. One is when he's standing over her coffin. And, you know, he can just make such the slightest look with those eyes and that mm -hmm. mouth. That face can speak without speaking. And he did that. With over the coffin. Oh, he's, yeah. He did he's that. He's amazing. And the filmmaker ended with that. Mm -hmm. It ended on Firth's face. It's circled around from the back of his head. And as it comes forward, you start, he's first it's static. And then all of a sudden he makes that slight smirk. Smile. Like he just got away with it and he totally. knows it. Totally. Oh my God. Well, I, uh, I'm going to finish watching it. I've only watched uh, just a little bit of the first episode to be honest, but now I'm definitely going to watch it just to get to that end part. So <laughs> Aphrodite, I know you've got all kinds of things going on. Tell us uh, like, why were you in London? Was it anything going on well, with your career or what? Well, yeah, I mean, I had this BBC documentary is huge over there. I don't mm -hmm. know if you realize, I mean, it, it's won awards, it's worldwide. So I did an update with um, the gentleman who produced that, Mark Sandell, for the BBC. And, and I was able to get the lead homicide detective on that case, Art Holland, to participate in it this oh. time because Back in time when this was done about three, four years ago, Art Holland was tired of it. There was so much media on the, this case. Mm -hmm. He just started to say no to people, you know. Right. Dateline did it, 2020 did it, did it, you know. It was just done, done, and overdone. My show did it, et cetera. So that was one of the reasons I was over there, um, to, to, to actually get involved with some of the people at the BBC. And, and it's possible that there will be more interviews to come Wonderful. because... You know, that's, as I said, Colin Firth, that to them, that's their hero. That, yeah, he's a good so, guy, yeah. So that's that's part of it. But, but cool. more importantly, right now, I am today celebrating the day that 17 years ago on this date, Michael Jackson was exonerated by a jury in the Santa Maria court in California and set free. You know, now, you've written a book about that, right? Yes. Michael Jackson okay. conspiracy. I right. did. And uh, well, tell us, tell us what you think. Tell tell us a little bit about what, what you think happened in that case. Okay. So here's what my book is about. Okay. My book is about the fact that the media twists information and facts. So they, that's the truth. But I wrote that in 2007. So mm -hmm. at the time that I wrote that, Trisha, I thought I was writing my death sentence. Really? Do you understand? Because, because you didn't I, go with the popular. Well, I did. I was covering it for Fox, and I did go with it. But when he got a, when he got found not guilty on fourteen counts, all of a sudden I had that epiphany of, oh my God, the emperor has no clothes. Of mm -hmm. course he's not guilty. What mm -hmm. was I thinking this whole time? I was transfixed by twenty three hundred other media people who were there with an agenda. Right. As was I. Right. Right. But. When I sat back and I looked back after that, I started to realize, wait a minute, what's the evidence that the jury actually looked at? Can I get a hold of any of these jury members and talk to them? Ultimately, I was able to do that but and for my show. But for the book, I actually went back to all the evidence, the transcripts. I got everything, okay? And what you find is this. That family who accused Michael Jackson of, of molestation mm -hmm. are a group of grifters. They had already um, pulled off some lawsuit against JC Penney's. The mother, mother claimed that she had been molested by a JC Penney guard at the parking right. lot. Right. Um, and then there were all the people the family had gone after, celebrities like Jay Leno, Chris Tucker, um, and on and on, George Lopez, mm -hmm. who all testified about this family being grifters and users and and because the son was sick, that was the the grift basically, and he was sick, right? He was sick. He had cancer. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, we also saw footage and photos of Michael Jackson strolling this bald kid around in a wheelchair around mm -hmm. Neverland. He was brought there because there, Michael Jackson always had kids come who wanted to be healed or wanted to be, have fun. That, mm -hmm. that, that was a regular thing at Neverland. He had busloads of kids that were there. Even when he wasn't there, he let this happen. He wanted it to happen. He wanted people to have a childhood. We right. all know that. So here, here's the thing. In this case, and Jackson fans get mad at me when I say, I can only speak to this case. Sure. But I will speak in this case, 100%. This was a setup. Mm -hmm. 100%. 
These people lied. Tom Mesereau was able to impeach them on the stand. And when I say people, I mean the accuser, his brother, his sister, his mother. All right. Mm -hmm. There was a tape footage that was done that Jackson's people had this family do after the Bashir documentary came out. Right. Right. And in that footage, there's a rebuttal footage that we saw again and again throughout the trial where the whole family sits together, the mother and the three children. And she says, where were they when I needed a box of cereal? Where were they when mm -hmm. I couldn't feed my children? Only Michael took care of us. Michael was like a father to my son. And then the kid who's the accuser says, you know, Michael was like my daddy. I love him. Baba. This is all made after the accusations and after the documentary by Bashir was already on the air. Right. And let's remind everybody that uh, documentary that was done was very controversial because it shows the boy sitting with Michael and they're holding hands and the boy puts his head on Michael's shoulder. And they're sitting on the bed. And they're sitting on the bed. It was very shocking. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and that's exactly the point mm -hmm. that I, I wanted to get to, which is, did you know that Martin Bashir set that up? He suggested that they hold hands. He suggested that they oh sit on God. the bed. And guess who tells you that? The mother in that rebuttal tape. Really? Oh God, so I didn't like, know that. It's not like it's somebody else telling you this is what happened. No, she says, mm -hmm. you know, he wanted them to hold hands. Okay. That was a total setup. Wow. And Bashir wanted to make his name off of that show, hit mm -hmm. that, and he did. He became a worldwide phenomenon, came over to the United States. I don't know if you recall, he got a gig with ABC, he was right. making a fortune. And then guess what happened? Years later, not only did he get kicked off the air, but he got brain cancer. Oh, did you he know? die? I don't know. Honestly, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. But, but was he the one that did the Diana interview? That yes. Did and he's the one that got all the fake paperwork and. Correct. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that was he's awful. Discredited they made, journalist. Yeah, they made uh, Diana's brother think that the uh, palace, everybody in the palace was following her. And they, they printed up fake bank documents to show her brother and say, you, you know, you need to show this to your sister so she'll talk to us. It was all a ruse. None of that was going on. Yeah. What a horrible human being. He is. How and, terrible and is that? Totally unethical. And Mesro mm -hmm. was able to discover that. And he questioned him on the fact that he had been admonished by the BBC and by the television standards in in England. Um, he had already been uh, warned and had uh, slapped with fines or whatever they do over there. I'm not sure I remember now, but it, it was clear from jump that he was a discredited journalist, that th mm -hmm. that was in his background. To what extent at that time, we did not know. You've got more information now and we right. do than, than we did ever before. Yeah, but, but you know what? It was because of the Bashir documentary that that whole trial went on to begin with. Exactly. That was the whole, yeah. I right. mean, that was the opening of the trial. Was, the, was Martin Bashir on the stand and the showing of his entire documentary for two and a half hours. And of oh. course, we got to see the unedited moments mm -hmm. because Michael Jackson had his own photog videographer there taping everything oh, that was wow. his only safeguard mm -hmm. he never signed a contract he gave the guy free reign he didn't take any money for it he thought this guy was enamored by princess diana and all of that mm -hmm. but one thing he did do was have his own videography there taping it as well that was very smart very it was smart, smart because then we saw everything and you mm -hmm. see where martin Bashir is like the incy wincy spider and at points when there's no his camera's not running but the Michael Jackson's videographer right. is, and he says, did you see that Pope, what's going on in, in, in with the Catholic church? Cause at that time, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, it was the beginnings of all the unraveling of the pedophilia at, right. in the Catholic church. So he's eensy weensy spidering over to Michael with things like this in the off times, which we see. Um, and it goes on and on like that. And you see what a traitor this guy is. That's horrible. That is, oh my God. Well, you're right. That is karma. Karma really came back to him pretty damn hard. Karma's a bitch.
to you get know, and so if for, to anyone who to anyone who really really feels that you know Michael is guilty and that he's, that's, that this was proof positive, you know, read the book because you will see how slanted the media is. And in fact, I'm going to put out now a companion piece. The, I have an audio book on Michael Jackson conspiracy being in the works right now. Oh, I had never released it before. And finally I'm doing it. It should be ready by the end of June. Um, yeah. And so while that's in the works, I realized I need to write a companion piece for that mm -hmm. and really go through what the media did and go through, not, not name all the names, but try to make it understood. People like say Diane Diamond, who had an absolute uh, financial advantage should he go to prison. And she was the one that was promised the first dibs at photos of Michael. And we know that because she was the one that was on Neverland property with her cameras when that when Neverland was raided mm -hmm. years before. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, and there's more. I mean, there are plenty of others. But mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, I... Now, since we all have social media, which we didn't have back in 2005 when that trial happened, mm -hmm. um, not in the same way, clearly, right. um, it was in its infancy. Um, now, I want people to know, see what I was really talking about, rather than just alluding to it and showing mm -hmm. what the media didn't show. I want people to know just how bad the media was and yeah. has been. This isn't new. No, this isn't new. And that's what's sad. And that's one thing that that I've been learning a lot of that mainstream media has really created false narratives on many things, you know, and totally. they've destroyed people's lives. No doubt. What do you think about uh, the two boys that testified at the trial that Michael had molested them and then took it all back or not? No, I'm sorry. They testified he didn't molest him at the trial. And then in the HBO special, they testified that they lied that, yes, he did molest them. Well, I here's what those those kids names are Wade Robeson and, and uh, Johnny Safechuck. Um, I think it's Johnny, but last name is Safechuck. Mm -hmm. They both sued the Jackson estate looking for money. Um, they pursuant to the Leaving Neverland uh, film documentary. So to say they didn't c collect any money from the talking in the documentary may be true, but it was all about the money because they sued the estate for millions of dollars and ultimately the judge threw, the, the judges threw in Los Angeles, threw their cases out. Um, they were never able to prove anything. Mm -hmm. They... I watched part of the Living ne Leaving Neverland. It was very disturbing. Um, I just, I felt like it was a hit piece and I just couldn't keep watching it. I, I, you know, here's a man who's dead in his grave. He's the greatest entertainer, one of them in the world. He did more for children than anyone realizes in terms of hospitals and donations and mm -hmm. monies that nobody even realizes all the work this guy did, um, you know heal the world, we are the world, all these things that he created and participated and did, all the good works he did, what more can I give? Right. Um, you know, gets gets completely thrown out the window by allegations from kids who, if, the, if it was really true, why did they get on the witness stand and say nothing ever happened? Yeah, I know. I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer. It's such a, a, a mess. It is such a mess. But, but I agree with you when I, um, uh, I, I watched that trial closely and I was not the least bit surprised when he was found not guilty because I don't feel like they proved the case at all. The prosecution, they, they really didn't have anything. I just remember the mother testifying that he saw, she saw Michael lick her son on the head or something in an airplane. Right. Weird stuff like that, you know, yes. Yes. very yes. strange. And um, I, I knew that the, the the boy had been sick, but I didn't realize that they had gone after other celebrities to get money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they all know. testified. They all testified. And Chris Tucker warned Michael Jackson said, mm -hmm. watch out for these people because there's something wrong with them. They had gone to the set of rush hour two or three, whatever it was. Right. And, um, you know, based on the fact the kid was sick and it was like a wish and he wanted to go and they all, the whole family went, and then they upgraded themselves to the hotel where Chris Tucker was staying. 
you know, the store usually stays in a five-star right. hotel sure. and the crew and everybody else are staying wherever. They were staying wherever with the regular people, which they should have been, mm -hmm. and they upgraded themselves oh to the to the five-star hotel. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that went on. They With George Lopez, he had them at his home uh, for lunch and they were playing on the swing set. He took them shopping. When I say them, because the three children, all of them didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just that their brother was sick, Gavin Arvizo, but it was that none of them had any money. They were underprivileged. And um, so he, he did that. And then he got a phone call. One of his assistants got a phone call that Gavin had left his wallet there and there was a hundred dollars in it. I think that was the amount. And the, 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 the person that answered the phone looked for the wallet and couldn't find it and sent the money to the Arvizos. And Lopez was furious because that never happened. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know that one of his people took it upon themselves to reimburse the Arvizos for money allegedly missing. Right. That, I mean, this is the kind of stuff these people were That's pulling. Terrible. They, they were, they're disgusting lowlifes. Did, have you ever done a follow-up on where this young man ended up or what he's doing? Or You know, I... It, honestly, I have not. And I, I don't want to follow up on somebody who has spent, uh, unfortunately, I can't totally blame the kid. The mother oh, right. trained these children to do this. They were in acting school. They were in stand-up comedy. This is how they started to connect with stars to begin with. They had been prepared in the J.C. Penney lawsuit, which was mm -hmm. settled and, and the family got a lot of money for. They had been, so, so they, it was as though she had prepared them. This was the this was the biggest moment of their lives. Right. And had Michael been found guilty, which was their hope, then they would have automatically won a civil suit. They wanted mm -hmm. that twenty million dollars or twenty five million dollars that had been handed over to Jordy Chandler. That right. was the goal. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's just amazing. So you're going to do a follow up um, piece, and you're going to do an audio book with yeah, more so information. The, the, well, yes, I mean, the audiobook will be be exactly what, with an additional, actually did an additional mm -hmm. piece with the audio. But also, I am going to write something that, in in whatever ways I can, Trisha, I don't want to just sell everybody out, but in whatever ways I can, show just how malicious and and biased and, I don't know, angry this this media crowd was it was like a lynching it was like a public lynching of michael jackson and i need to find a way to show that to people well i i, I wish you would because that would be fascinating i think it's, it's absolutely something we need to know we, yeah. we need to know what's going on we don't have any idea and with social media now i feel very strongly that people cannot hide anymore you can't okay. hide what you're doing the police can't hide what they're doing you know, reporters can't hide what they're doing. Reporters can't just report something and not expect people to to check it out and call them out if they're wrong. It happened recently in uh, in the Amber uh, and Johnny case. I'm not going to mention the reporter, but this reporter just made up something and boom, called out like that before you couldn't do it, you know. Exactly. And that so. and that is the wonderful thing about social media. We yes. have all have voices now. And mm -hmm. so it's good and bad. There's the owls. Yeah, there are the owls. I'm stories. not thrilled about. Yes. But then there are the real there are people who say, hey, 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 wait a minute, buddy. I know the facts here. And it comes out and, and, and everything comes out in the wash. And you know, okay, so to quickly uh touch on Amber Heard. Amber and Johnny, we've got to, yes. Okay. So first of all, I, I understand she's being called Amber Turd. Yeah, yeah, that's a big, there's even a woman that dresses up as Amber Turd and walks around out in front of the courthouse. <laughs> yeah. And then I love all the little memes or whatever you call it, uh, gifts of people like exploiting her, her worst and best moments mm -hmm. when she was acting on the stand. The acting was atrocious. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because when that trial, before it started, in my mind, kind of like in the Michael Jackson trial, mm -hmm. I'm thinking Johnny Depp must be a nut. Who knows what kind of drugs he's on? Who knows what kind of alcohol he's drinking? He had been found liable in a previous 
and the case brought too. by her right. in against the sun in in England. So to me, before I hear anything, I'm already convicting Johnny Depp, right? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly this trial starts, and I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> uh, they're both crazy. Yes, yeah. let's, let's oh, get yeah. that straight on the Absolutely. table. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, that footage of him walking around in the pirate hat. That'll never die. I'm sorry. <laughs> when he's like smashing glasses and yeah, it was liquid and fluid and I don't know what was going on. Yeah, that was but, that was crazy. Crazy. Um, but I guess if you're that big a star, you can be crazy. I think what happened is that he got roped into a situation where he was now living with an abuser mm -hmm. and he couldn't figure his way out of it for whatever right. reason. And somehow or another, that woman was so manipulative, almost like, my, you know, I want to say Michael Peterson. Very much so, right. You know, I mean, just manipulating the other partner to the point that they're thinking they're crazy. They, mm -hmm. You know, they, Gaslighting, it, yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a codependent insanity mm -hmm. of domestic violence right. that is perpetrated in, in this case, n by the wife, not by the husband. Right. But I think, I, I don't, I didn't realize that that was going to be the outcome mm -hmm. going into it. I don't, what did you think? Did you know? I, no, I didn't. I had followed a little bit of the son, uh, the, where Johnny Depp sued the son. And I saw the outcome and I knew British court was a lot different and they didn't let in a lot of information, a lot of, of the evidence. And so I was curious, but I thought for sure he would lose. Whether he was guilty or not, I just thought there's no way that he is not going to lose this. Well, then as I, like you, I start watching the evidence and I keep thinking, okay, he's still gonna lose, but damn, this is amazing. And then I, toward the end, I'm like, he can't lose, but he probably still will. And oh my God, he's he's innocent. And yeah, right. I was so worried until the day that verdict came down. I, after just a couple of days of watching the court case, fully believed that he absolutely never hit Amber Heard. He didn't do all of those horrible things that she claimed. She kept making them bigger and bigger. She lied. He didn't. He should have won. And I was terrified that he wouldn't. So um, yeah, I'm, and, I was and so thrilled to see that. And, and, you know, it's interesting because we live in a culture, and this has been forever, and Michael Jackson's a perfect example of it, where we seem to love to watch the top of the heap fall. The yes, greater the person, the more we, as a society, mm -hmm. take a certain glee in watching the person fall. Right. So to me, thinking of the Johnny Depp trial, I'm thinking, oh. Here's this guy. He spent thousands of thousand dollar wine and mm -hmm. da, 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 you know, all his places, islands and whatever he's got all over the world. And he thinks who he is. And now he's going to fall. Now Big he's time. going to crumble, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I do believe that that's why people started watching it. And when absolutely it, right. And then when, but when things started to turn, all of a sudden, like Michael Jackson fans, right? You mm -hmm. started to see Johnny Depp fans oh, coming all out over. Mm -hmm. and clapping and supporting and cheering for him. It was amazing. It was really amazing, and and it was it was um, it made me believe in another part of the human race, which is the part that says, you know what? We love our heroes. We don't want to see them fall. You know, we, we do want to see justice. We do want to believe what the truth is. And we can see it for ourselves as well. Right. That's it. We can see the truth. And anybody who says this is, you know, a horrible thing for the Me Too movement. No, it's not. It's just the opposite. To me, it just shows, hey, the truth came out, whatever that truth is. And I'm telling you, I have known men who have been abused. And I am so glad to see this because I think we're going to see more of that coming out. There will always be, the scales will always be, you know, men abusing women up here. It's never going to be equal because right. that's just how it is. But don't ruin a man's reputation because there is an accusation. Wait until everything comes in and then decide. That's all. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. You're you a know? thousand percent right. Nothing and I, wrong and with I have that. to say to that end, I wrote a book called Della's Web. Oh, and and, one of my, my that's my top time, ten, my absolute top favorite book by oh, far. I, I, mean, I love all your books, but I read that like you. five times. All right. Yeah. So, you know, that 
Della, who changed her name to Dante and was a shapeshifter. Right. Yes. I should have called it Dante's Web, but I couldn't because she's Della. She's so monster. <laughs> she's a fucking monster. And she tortured and abused seven husbands, who one of whom she killed. She killed, murdered. Yeah, absolutely. So, the doctor. She was threatening them with knives and mm -hmm. guns and setting them up with drugs in the house. One guy, husband, if you remember, she burned his house down. I mean, yeah. this is major stuff. And, and she would get away with it because, oh, I, officer, he was horrible to me. And she's this little petite diminutive woman who got away with it, very pretty. The From law the wanted to believe, couldn't believe that she was be the, so evil. And and was the, was the uh, violent person. The aggressor, she yeah. She was the aggressor. And now we see, again, with Amber Heard, proof of this and the fact that, yes, this has gone on. It does go on. And like you say, this is a boom for the Me Too movement. I agree. It, it makes it, um, it, it clarifies. It gives you a, a, a like a red line. Do you know? Yes. It's not just believe the women. We believe mm -hmm. the women anymore. Right. right. It's let's look at the truth. Uh, there you go. Let's look at the truth. That's all. There's And people are trying to make that a bad thing. And we're not saying, oh, we don't believe the women at, at the second they say anything. We're not saying that. We're saying, okay, we hear you. We take this very seriously. Let's look into it. Let's help you. You know, nothing wrong with that. Right. And I don't right. get why they, they people just freak out over it. I just don't understand. Well, you know, part of it, I think, Trisha, honestly, is that they... <sighs> There's still a, there's still more people who have been abused by men and who have been s sitting silently afraid to come out. Absolutely. And so that is a movement that still has a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe people in the newest generations now that are being growing up in it would feel oh, it would be OK mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, come out. But there is plenty of women from all these generations that we we know are still in the shadows. You yes. know, the victims of Bill Cosby, the victims Absolutely. of Harvey Weinstein, the victims, and we can keep going, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, of Matt Lauer, of, you know, let's just go through the, think about if, if there are so many victims of those stars, how many victims are there of, you know, in everyday life? Right. Millions, thousands. At millions, hundreds, you're right. Thousands, Absolutely you know? right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I think the Me Too movement is still in part of an infancy. It's been around since I think it broke in 2017 because I was yes. doing, I, I was in LA, I was being a part of a Paley Center awards thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember being asked, do you think anyone else will be, have the finger pointed at them by well, somebody at the red carpet? I thought, I said, yeah. yeah you know, I think it'll but, be a lot, probably. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's only been five years, uh, which is a lot of time in one way, but not a lot of time when you think about a lifetime and lifetimes yes. and generations of this kind of thing. And I right. think that's why the Me Too people are worried because they feel like, uh oh, now we're not going to be believed. Now what? Now maybe I won't come out and say anything. Um, so I get it. But at the yeah. same time, there needs to be there needs to be some balance here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Just you've got it. All you need to do is look for the truth. Don't say you don't believe someone, but don't ruin someone just because there's an accusation out there that you have not looked into. It's real simple. Exactly. You know, real and simple. I think I thought Johnny Depp was crazy for bringing that suit. And as the more craziness came out about his drug use and whatever, I was thinking to myself, oh, my God, what did he open? What Pandora's box is he opening? Mm -hmm. But really, he was not crazy. No. He, he did the right thing. He and was boy, brilliant. He, he was and brilliant. And he yeah. said, you know what? You bitch. You cost me my franchise with mm -hmm. the pirates, right? Right. He, she cost him another franchise. I don't know what the movie was. Another. Right. And you're not going to get away with this. Good. And you he know? said he did it for his children because his children had to endure your dad's a wife beater. And he's not, you know, yeah. now. They are also trying to get the case in England reopened. It's really difficult over there. But the fact is, um, the judge had connections to the Sun newspaper. Uh, what people have to realize is um, the the evidence that the judge looked at was he believed Amber. That right. that was the evidence. And 
um, as far as uh, the medical records, it was her talking to her therapist. Right. You know, that was it. You right. know, and and so people see what happened in the U.S. and are like, wait a minute, let's let all this other evidence. So I I don't know if it'll happen, but I really do hope it does because the son needs to be held accountable for just believing Amber Heard and putting that on their their uh, front page like that. that was yeah, I, well, you know, of course, the the uh, the British press is notorious for yes. making all kinds of crap up and getting away with it. Let's yeah. face it, right? Oh, yeah. So I don't know that the, that will ever be rectified. Mm -hmm. um, but but he has now been exonerated in a court in the U.S. and in the world of public opinion. Yes. That has gone around the world. Mm -hmm. So whether or not, you know, the Sun newspaper pays for what they did or not, is immaterial, I think, at this point. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, it, right. It's right. kind of a. It's an. It would be an extra add-on, but we already all know. He's got it. He's there. he's got it. His life is back. His reputation right. is back. Disney would be foolish not to offer him uh, the pirates' role again, but I don't think he would take it at this point. Maybe he would. I don't. Oh, know. I think he'd take it. I, I hope so. I'd love it. to see him in it again. I really yeah, would. Yeah, I think so. he'd take it. I do. I do. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting too that you know. So many lives of stars, right, were hidden back in the past. Like, you know, you look at Rock Hudson, who turned out to be gay, and you know, way back, right? Right. And and we don't like to know. We like to know their personal lives, but we don't like to know things that would make them them distasteful to us, right? Exactly. And there were a few big Hollywood stars that I can't name, but you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Everyone does. That perhaps are of a different persuasion but like mm -hmm. to play the, um, you know, leading man love interest. Mm -hmm. They'll never know the truth about it because they need to keep that image clear. Exactly. Right. To make that money and mm -hmm. have that fan base. So, um, you know, I, I do think that people will accept Johnny Depp again because they realize he, he's not a bad guy and he's a great actor. He's a great actor, not a bad guy, good to his friends, you know, a little eclectic and that's good. And that's it. That's what he is. You know, it's wonderful. It, it I'm just is. so glad he got it back. I got, I'm glad he got everything back. Me okay, too. everybody, what I want you to do is go to AphroditeJones.com. And are you on Twitter and Facebook, my dear? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, what are you on Twitter? What's your what's your Twitter handle? Oh, my God. You know what? I just kind of started to tweet again after. Uh, uh, you know, I'll find it. I'll find it and put you'll it find, in the description. I, for, uh, my uh, Facebook, I'm good with so far. Instagram, mm -hmm. I just started. And okay. Twitter, I haven't done since the Casey Anthony trial, I have to say. So I've just come back to it. Um, I'm new. I'm new okay. on that. That's um, okay. We'll send them to uh, AphroditeJones.com and I'll find your Twitter and Facebook and we'll be good to go. How's that? Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. And Aphrodite, it was so wonderful to have you on. You are so good to me and to Web Sleuths. I, I can't thank you enough. So you take care. Be safe out there and keep in touch, okay? Okay, I will do. Thanks for having me, Trisha. I appreciate it. Take care it. now. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Don't you just love her? I love her. She contacted me and said, hey, Trish, can I come talk? And I'm like, oh, well, OK. I'm you know, jumping through the, the roof. You're going, yes, come on, come on. OK, I'm wearing my grandmother's curtains again tonight. And I put this on and it hurt my my big fat head. I have a big fat head, not because I have a big fat brain, but I don't know what it is. I just have my brother doesn't have a big fat head. My mom and dad don't. Oh, good Lord. Come on. Get out of there. Ugh. Anyway, that hurt my head. Ugh. Okay, let's see. A um, couple of things. Uh, we do uh, need your donations pretty please. Okay? If somebody could put the donations link up in the uh, doodad in the chat, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll put it in the description as well. That is how we survive. I started this live stream for two reasons. It was during COVID. I wanted to, everybody to have a place to come and enjoy. And I also needed a, another stream of income so I could keep websluice.com going. This does cost money to do. So uh, anything you could do. In fact, I need to thank a few people here. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I want to thank uh, Love 
my Charlie Faye, thank you so, so much. And thank you, LM, for making a donation through the Super Chat and the membership. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you would like to do Super Chat, that's great. We do have a PayPal, a Venmo, and the uh, Cash app. And we'll put that up in the chat and we'll put it in the description as well. And let me just check really quickly to see if I have anybody we can thank in PayPal. And then I'm going to have to kind of cut short our uh, story about John Walsh's daughter, but it's pretty, it's sad. It's just sad to me, very sad. Um, basically, she has lost, or four, all four of her children have been removed from her home. Her name is Megan. And uh, I'm going to play some of a podcast that she was on. And it's just sad. It is just very, very sad. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, people. Oh, Tracy R., you are so sweet. Thank you so much. And Mary O., what a doll. Thank you both very, very much very much. Let's see here. Hold on. I thought I had just a second. Oh yeah. There we go. That is, you guys are sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let me just check uh, Venomu really quickly here. I can never figure out Venmo. Um, no. Come on, just show me. Do I have, I don't think I have anything in Venmo. No, I don't. Okay. Oh, and Cash App. Hold on. I do have something from the other day that I want to say. And, and in Cash App, they, they don't allow you to send a message. All you can do is send a heart or a thumbs up or something. So hang on here. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. No, I can't find it. Come on. Where did it go? Oh, Christina S. Thank you, Christina S. Thank you very much. Very, very much. Okay. Okay. Y'all know John Walsh, right? America's Most Wanted. His son, Adam, was kidnapped and murdered while his uh, wife was in, I believe, Sears. And she turned her back for just a few minutes. And uh, they believe Otis O'Toole is the one that uh, killed him and did horrible things to him before he died. Adam's head was found and then the police lost it. Yeah. It's really bad what happened with the Hollywood police. Uh, I'm sure if you Google it, you can read about it, but it is just shocking. Now, code Adam is what you hear now if a child is missing in a store. They go code Adam and boom, all the doors lock. Nobody can get out if there's a child missing, which is a great thing. But John Walsh took his pain, and it was horrible pain, and turned it into America's Most Wanted. Now, y'all remember Brian Landry and Gabby Petito. He became involved in that case, and he, he said some things that were controversial. And he did a few things, like he, you know, kind of, I think at a press conference, he jumped ahead of everybody and, and said, uh, you know, asked some kind of iffy questions. I can't remember what, but... Um, it was a little bit controversial. What I'm going to do now is play you a portion of a podcast, which I've already linked in the description. And this is Megan Walsh. And she has had four of her children removed. Just recently, her four-day-old baby was removed. Now, I want you to listen carefully to what she says. We're going to play about 10 minutes or more of it. I want you to sit and listen carefully. And at the end, can you tell me what she is really talking about? Okay. 
I do know there are people that are um, in QAnon that like her and, and follow her. I don't know if she's into that or not. She says some things in here that makes me think she may be, but I don't know. So um, I have to ask you this. We know John Walsh and his wife. Uh, he's in his 70s now. She, I believe, I hope I'm not mistaken, but I, and I'm just getting this information from Megan. I believe he has her three older children. I don't know what their ages are, but I don't believe he has her baby. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to play this. I'm just going to play the audio. Where'd it go? People, where'd it go? Here it is. Okay. So. And again, the link to the audio is in the description. Let me find it here. Okay, hold on here. Okay, we're going to kind of start in the middle. And uh, if you have any problems with this, please uh, post something in chat that you can't hear it, okay? So here we go. And again, this is Megan Walsh talking about her children being removed from her home. And it is her father and mother that have instigated the removal. And this is on a podcast called The Imagination uh, and also has uh, Penny, L.A. Shepard. Yeah. And again, link is in description. Here we go. For me, that is a very traumatizing experience. That's something I never would have ever imagined and never would put myself in as a law abiding citizen and one that's supported law enforcement my entire life in the public eye. So, I, you know, I don't know how else to go about that. Um, so then then they um, applied for me to have an automatic jail transfer the next day uh, so that I would have to show up after a night in oh, jail sorry, guys. Hold uh, on. and in shackles or whatever. I didn't. I started at the wrong place. Just a minute. Because that wouldn't make any sense. That was just a, that was a long, convoluted story that I could not tell you what it was. Here we go. Um, first of all, can you hear it? OK. Can everybody hear that? OK. I'm just looking at chat here. Can anybody, did everybody hear that okay? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, I started it at the wrong place. Here we go. Her brother, her sister, those exact players have different names in my situation um, and many others. So it's a protocol that Penny will get into. It's a playbook, how they take your home, they discredit you, they take your children, they break you, they say you need help and they grab their chest the whole way through. And when on the back end, they're all profiting from it. And this includes my brothers, um, you know, and a lot of people can't believe it. And it, and I can't believe half of it. Um, so, you know, that really brings out the, the system, the CPS system. It only encouraged me more to talk out about it because there are hundreds of thousands and millions of parents and children that are suffering every single day within our system. And it is the largest way that, that our children are trafficked. People need to realize that. The National Center, if you don't want to believe me and you want to believe agencies that lie to you or nonprofits that lie to you, the center themselves, National Center for Missing Exploited Children, will tell you that over 80% of children that are put into child trafficking come from the CPS system itself, which then... Okay, I want to stop and, and comment on that. I don't know if that's true, but let's think about it, okay? A lot of the kids that are put into trafficking, and, and what that means is they're made to work the streets for sex, um, they're runaways. And they've probably been in the CPS system, okay? They are runaways. Or they've been in and out of the CPS system for whatever reason, and maybe their parents, their mom or dad, uh, puts them out on the street. Perhaps a foster, fam a foster parent would. But I'll tell you what, I know the foster system is broken, but you and I both know there are great people in the foster system that just night and day live to help these kids. So to me, if that is true, she's making it sound like, because what she's leading up to is that CPS is involved in child trafficking and that's what they're doing. And it, it's from everybody, you know, 
on up to the DAs and the judges. It's this big conspiracy. And she'll get into that. I think that's what she's saying. But anyway, if that is true, that wouldn't surprise me if 80% of the people in child trafficking, has ha they've had something to do with CPS. Yeah, because the kids in child trafficking are usually uh, come from very troubled homes. Again, just saying if that's true. And let's continue. Which then leads me to say, why aren't they doing anything about it then? Why isn't that what they're talking out about? And why aren't there huge campaigns from the National Center for Missing Exploited Children saying, we need to stop child trafficking in this real way. We need to redo this system. You know, pride is a deadly sin. And, you know, when systems are, we are the people that have allowed these systems to come into place and to exist. And when something's no longer serving and not working, let's get over ourselves and let's redo it. Let's stop it. We're very blessed these days that there are so many people that have been through it, have the empathy for it, have worked in different ways of healing besides traditional Nazi Germany mental health industry that's being pushed on us now. Then we can, there's better ways is the point. Okay, the fact that she says Nazi Germany mental health systems that are being pushed on us now leads me to believe that, um, in fact, she does say at some point in this podcast that she was put in a mental institution. Now, um, there are reasons why people are put into mental institutions. And uh, sometimes people can sound really normal, but they're very paranoid and, and do weird things. Just saying. So anybody that describes the system, yeah, it's broken and needs to be fixed, but it's not Nazi Germany. Okay, quit using that because there's nothing like Nazi Germany. Sorry. Okay, I gotta get up. I'm listening, I need to find a pen. We need to bring families together instead of breaking them up for profit. We need to end CPS and we need to present and come together better ways to help our children because there are real issues and our children do need us. But this whole, it takes a village and all of this has been horribly perverted by the Clintons, by Title IV, um, by these databases, by the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, by uh, under, Underground Railroad. I mean, different all of these different things that have put out these huge narratives in protecting our children when actually they are on the deeper level more so than these predators in your neighborhood or these serial killers that they're promoting to you, uh, these heebie-jeebie guys, which will go back, you know, that goes back to my brother Adam's case, you know, and we'll eventually get to that. But you know, really what I wanted to focus on was really addressing this with people and having people start asking questions. If people have a, you know, kind of a adverse reaction to it or, or things like that, I actually like it. Let's let's talk about that. Let's look from each other's perspectives. Why wouldn't you believe that? Let's talk about that. Why? You okay, let me tell you why I wouldn't believe it. And later on, she says it goes way up the line. What she is saying is Child Protective Services and people like her father, she gets into this later, are, uh, they're the cause for child trafficking. And it's more dangerous than the child predators that are, you know, that are in your neighborhoods. That the CPS system is more dangerous to your children because they're the ones trafficking the kids. Okay, let's talk about it. Proof. Give me a little proof. Just something. Just show me. Really. As, as, um. Chasing Truth says, I love her. Just show me the just show me the proof. You know, what's up, you guys? Oh, ah, Welcome to the, the imagination no, where everything no, no, you think no, stop. Ah, it just jumped to another one. Hold on. Uh, hold on, people. Just a minute. Hold on. OK, this should take us right where we left off. But anyway, I just I just need the proof. Don't make a statement like. Child Protective Services all over the country. I mean, if that if she she's saying it's Child Protective Services, that means every every location in the United States is somehow connected to this big child trafficking ring. Hold on. Please go back to where I started. Or I left off. Yes, here we go. Is real. I'm your host, Emma, no, and I am so uh, no, that isn't what I wanted. I'm sorry, guys. It just screwed up here. Big time. Just a minute. I've got to go back. 
and do this and do this. I'm so excited to introduce. No, I don't want that. It's not letting me play it. Oh, good Lord. Come on. It keeps jumping to another, uh, another one. Okay, stop. To you, this next series that I'm doing. No, I don't want that. Hold on. I want to go back. Go back. There. Called the survivor. It's not letting me play it again. Oh, come on. Really? Come on. And murder um, and profit on our children. Here we go. If that's what I, that's, you know, what God has given to me, then. Let me back it up here just a little bit. Sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. Additional Nazi Germany mental health industry that's being pushed on us now, then we can, there's better ways is the point. We need to bring families together instead of breaking them up for profit. We need to end CPS and we need to present and come together better ways to help our children because there are real issues and our children do need us. But this whole it takes a village and all of this has been horribly perverted by the Clintons, by Title IV, um, by these databases, by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, by uh, under, Underground Railroad. I mean, different all of these different things that have put out these huge narratives in protecting our children when actually they are on the deeper level more so than these predators in your neighborhood or these serial killers that they're promoting to you, uh, these heebie-jeebie guys, which will go back, you know, that goes back to my brother Adam's case, you know, and we'll eventually get to that. But, you know, really what I wanted to focus on was really addressing this with people and having people start asking questions. If people have a, you know, kind of a adverse reaction to it or, or things like that, I actually like it. Let's let's talk about that. Let's look from each other's perspectives. Why wouldn't you believe that? Let's talk about that. Why, you know, what, what's preventing you from speaking up? You know, these different things. That's what we have to do to cross the division and to actually be able to do something about it. And we can. You know, it's not bigger than us. It's not up to the judiciary. It's not that. We hire those people. We are the ones that pay their salaries. And they take oaths to protect us. And if they're profiting and not protecting, then we have a right as the people to address that and to stop it. And many, and many in government and everything are not supporting it. It's all being allowed. District attorneys, this goes all the way up. It starts from local. The people trafficking your children and doing it are all around you. Yes, you watching, you know, your schools, your churches, your your local departments, everything. It is around you. And that's not to be, ooh, crazy. It's not saying everyone. It's not this exaggerated thing so that you can chalk it off and, and go to sleep at night. This is everywhere around you and it needs to be addressed and it goes all the way up as well. So, okay. It goes all the way up as well. Offering absolutely no proof. So um, all of you out there that are in law enforcement or in the court system working, you're a part of it as well. You're being accused of this. Okay. This is, for lack of a better term, this is crazy talk, okay? It sounds logical. It, I mean, it comes, she's sounding very good. But when you think about what she's saying, uh-uh, let's continue. Oh, and by the way, I want to thank, hold on. I want to thank Betty Yeti. Thank you so much for the super chat, my dear. I really appreciate it. Here we go. So, um, you know, for me, People go to war, you know, when mothers lose their children in war and they go sacrifice their lives and fight for our country um, under God and fighting for our children and to, to stop this, this legal trafficking and kidnapping and murder um, and profit on our children. 
if that's what I, that's, you know, what God has given to me, then I'm thankful every single day and I will give him all the praise and I'll never stop. You know, you just, you just made me fight more by taking my children. I don't have nothing to lose. You took my life. They literally took my life without physically killing me. And that is by government definition, non-physical forms of torture. There's also. And I get that. And I think we all get that. And now the children were not all removed at the same time. I don't know when it happened. I don't know. You know, I, I do know it was just a few days. It was just recently that her four or five day old baby was taken. And yeah, that would kill me. Um, there is a video that I, in fact, I'll find it and put it on, on the description where it shows the police taking uh, the baby and I'll let you decide. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Also a documented playlist for that. Uh, and one of the reasons why I also started speaking up and realizing my abuse on a much deeper level than everyday coercive control or, or domestic abuse. So I've talked enough for a second. I think Penny should get in there. Um, you know, I've got other things supporting facts and different things when people want to know or when it comes up. But, you know, that's really what's happened. Their end goal is a conservatorship um, where all of my my rights will be taken control of me. They can control my medical. They can control um, money. They also will then be able to um, access any financial or inheritance that they have done creative accounting and hidden their money uh, in me as we are seeing that, you know, a lot of this has been planned out for several years, if not longer. I know Penny will venture to say my whole life. So, um, Man. <laughs> okay. So in other words, because her dad is part of this big thing that this has been planned out for a long time what about are there any other grandkids have they been taken see we don't know we don't know all i all i know is i hear a woman that sounds intelligent and my heart breaks for her but she's talking crazy and i don't know john walsh i don't know his wife you know we know a little bit of him on tv but we don't know what he's like in real life we don't but I can tell you, John Walsh is not powerful enough to call up a sheriff and say, hey, go get my uh, grandchild or to call up CPS and say, go get my grandchild. Do you know how hard it is to get CPS to come to your house to do a visit? I've told you the story trying to get CPS to somebody's house who mom was doing drugs in front of the baby and they wouldn't because the grandma was there. It's incredible. So. It's not an easy task. Okay, continue on. This is Penny. This is the the, the guest. She is a uh, empathic healer who I think that means she heals you with her mind. I think. Not sure. Did you want to uh, say your website and your GoFundMe? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, aside from all of this crazy stuff, <laughs> I do, uh, I, I do, um, now you caught me off guard, sorry, excuse me, sorry. aside from all the craziness, <laughs> I, I, am, I am a life coach, I specialize in a holistic lifestyle transformation, um, I'm also a healer in terms of specializing in trauma, um, specifically childhood trauma and awakening. You know, a lot of us are waking up and, and it's a really not an easy thing, and so I really Awakening. Does that mean remember trauma that you didn't remember? I don't know. But I'm looking at you like this. Here we go. Really sit with people and help uh, navigate that as well as look at your own hardships and um, any physical ailments and things like that, but a holistic way to healing from within out and, and in a really nice way that, that is personal to you and um, also shows you literally how you can live your life, you know, just transferring your, your pantry to all natural, you know, things that are enjoyable because after we get over this darkness and these big humps, 
you know, there's, there's a lot to look forward to, you know, RSO, um, I do biohacking and I work for a great company that I'm looking for anyone that wants to join my team, um, and also educate others about biohacking and how to clean out your cells and, you know, all these great things naturally that we, that we have. So I do work one-on-one with people as well as in February, I will be doing a class and a workshop online uh, for those that sign up. We're, we're really starting slow and I need people to be patient with me because I'm doing all of this um, in trauma and fighting and everything. But I do wanna you know, keep helping. That's what you know, keeps me strong. And also, you know, I need to provide for my children where, you know, again, I've lost my house. I've got you know, maybe $1,000 to my name and a lot of expenses. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of that. So it's just been really mortifying, but I'm not going to give up. We have to keep going. And, uh, and it's been so amazing, the people that have supported me. Um, and, and again, you can look on many other um, interviews for more details on my story and stuff. I don't want people to think that I'm being vague, but we're, we're here on, on certain time. We're here to talk about, you know, more of a broader picture of, of what's going on today. So my, you know, if, if I was going to accuse that many people of child trafficking, and let me tell you, child trafficking happens. And let me tell you, CPS, everybody will admit that it is broken. Nobody is saying it isn't, but nobody has ever said CPS is the main child trafficker, like she's trying to say. Uh, first thing I do, I'd, I'd say, okay, yeah, I'm here to tell you about child trafficking. And here's the evidence. Here's the man. Here's the kid. Here's what happened. Go here. Look at that. Don't come on and be vague because it makes you sound crazy. You know, uh, let's, hey, if, but again, I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but people have deep issues that make it so family members are concerned about children in their household a little bit more so my my website is the wellness mercantile.com the wellness mercantile and then um others have set up an amazing fund for me uh by the grace of god under give send go so that's give send go uh dot com is it dot com or dot org penny i'm sorry i'm, I'm usually looking right now to i'm going to copy it to send it to her it's HTTPS slash slash givesendgo.com slash Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N, Walsh. It's, yeah, it's dot com, givesendgo.com, and then backslash Megan Walsh. Um, and then also, again, people can, we'll do this at the end, but people can find me on Twitter. We're just kind of trying to keep it simple, but that's Megan Walsh, M-E-G-H-A-N. I have an H in my name, uh, underscore on Twitter. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's important. That's one of the biggest ways that these messages get through. You know, these algorithms on social media, they don't want you get. OK, that's that's it. You can listen to the whole thing. Uh, like I said, it's in chat, uh, not in chat, sorry, in the description. But again, if this were going on, do you honestly think that anybody, anybody in this chat room, anybody you know, would ignore it? My God, if I saw a hint of this, I would be a monster. You couldn't stop me. So show me something. But to suggest, and she implies that her father um, is involved in all of this. And uh, she again, it is very vague. You have to listen to it. Uh, the Twitter I'll put in the description as well because it has the video of uh, the police coming to get the baby. Now, again, I can't stress enough how difficult it is to get a child removed from a home. Again, not saying that uh, abuses don't happen. Absolutely. There are horror stories coming from Child Protective Services. But I've known foster parents who have been wonderful people that are in no way involved in this. I just, again, 
when you go back and listen, Megan Walsh says a lot, but there's no connection. There's no, and I have found that um, on the few occasions in my life where I have talked to somebody who appears to be like you and me, but apparently is deeply disturbed. They can sound, I'm not saying she is, I don't know. I'm just saying you can sound really normal. But when you listen to your, their words, it's like, okay. And again, John Walsh, as far as I know, has not made any statements. Uh, Megan Walsh says in this interview that, um, that there is a blackout on media, that John was able to get the media to shut it down. We can't do that anymore on social media. So it's out there now. And uh, she put it out there. And I hope John Walsh says something, but he doesn't have to. Doesn't owe us anything when it comes to these kids. That's between him, Child Protective Services, and his daughter. Okay? But if there is pu uh, proof of any sort of this type of abuse, as my good friend Chasing Truth says, just show me. Put it up. Let's see it. Okay, my darling true crime angels. Again, thank you for your donations. Let me just make uh, one more quick run to see here because I want to make sure I say thank you to everybody. And um, hey, and remember, thanks to I Hate Chocolate. I love her. She is taking me to England. I told her I literally do not have a penny and she is paying for everything to take me to London. And we, uh, you're coming too, guys. Okay. We're going to be doing live streams like all the time. So you're all coming with us. You can't, you're not staying home. You're going to be right there with us. And then the, um, the trip will end with an incredible concert of Robert Plant and I believe the Eagles with Joe Walsh, if I'm not mistaken. It, she is so incredibly kind and generous. I can't say enough good about this woman. She is amazing. She is, she is, she is. So I'll be leaving Saturday. But again, don't worry. You're coming with us. Uh, oh, Lucy's World, thank you so, so much for the donation. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions about traveling to Europe, I've got the plug doodadders that switches the electricity over so the doodads can get the thingy up, charge my phone. But if you have any ideas of like what I should be thinking of, because I don't know, I haven't been, I used to go to England, London all the time, England, that's where my mom was from. And I went there a lot when I was a kid, but I haven't been, gosh, in like 25 years. So I don't know what's going on. So anyway, if you can think of any ideas of like, you know, me broadcasting from there. StreamYard works because people in England use it. So uh, I hope that's, I hope it'll work. If not, I'll just use YouTube. I'll figure, I'll figure it out. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much to our moderators, to our incredible Ping, and also uh, Love and Coco. Insightful One isn't feeling too good. Just keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys. I have got the uh, web sleuths in the raw, like already written for tomorrow. So there'll definitely be one. And then we'll be back live on Wednesday. Okay. 10 PM ish Eastern. I love you guys. Check out web the best true crime discussion forum in the universe. See you live on Wednesday. Love you. Bye-bye. Did I say thanks to ping? I think I did. Thank you. Ping.